Leia here from LeiaForSci.com and in this video we're going to solve the Orgo 2 practice final exam question 3. Download the exam and solutions on my website at LeiaForSci.com slash Orgo 2 final. Question 3 says to determine the product or products when 2-methyl 1,3-pentadiene reacts with HCl under hot and cold conditions. The first thing to recognize is that we're given a molecule to react but it's just a whole lot of letters and numbers and it doesn't tell me anything. When I see a name, the absolute first thing I want to do is turn it into a structure that I can look at, analyze, and understand. Pent tells me that I have a carbon chain that is five carbons long and will number it to follow along. On carbon number two, I have a methyl group and carbons one and three have a diene, meaning one pi bond each starting on carbon one and another one starting on carbon three. The next thing I want to recognize are the reaction conditions. We're given hydrochloric acid, which is an acid that will typically add in the Markovnikov fashion because hydrogen will add first, the carbocation will form, and chlorine will follow. But the difference here is that one, we have two pi bonds, not just one. So it's not a standard alkene addition reaction. And two, we're given hot and cold conditions. You should recognize that hot tells you thermodynamic and cold tells you kinetic. When you think of the word thermodynamic, think of thermo or thermal as heat. This is a reaction that takes place at elevated temperatures. When you think of kinetic, think of kinetic energy, speed of motion. This is about happening quickly, and the reason for that is because we're at low temperatures and the reaction is too cold, it wants to get it over with. There's a long way and a short way to work through this problem. The long way is to draw out the intermediates, figure out what is considered more or less stable, and then come up with the products. And the short way is the shortcut I'm about to show you. If one of your pi bonds is more substituted than the other, you tend to have two different products when you're reacting under hot or cold conditions. Remember that thermodynamic implies higher temperatures, increased ability to create an unfavorable intermediate for the purpose of getting a more stable final product. It's okay to take your time because under hot conditions, the intermediate is stabilized. Kinetic, on the other hand, is under low temperature. That means we're not providing enough heat to stabilize unfavorable intermediates. It's cold. We want to get out of the cold, so we want this reaction to happen, and we want it to happen fast. The skeleton remains the same, and the first step of the reaction is also the same. The absolute first thing we want to figure out is which pi bond to break, and the answer to that comes from the pi bond that, when broken, gives us a more stable carbocation. If I break this pi bond, I have the option of putting a hydrogen here and getting a secondary carbocation near a pi bond, meaning secondary allylic and resonance capable. And if I break this pi bond, I have a choice between putting the hydrogen here and getting a tertiary resonance capable carbocation or putting the hydrogen at the tertiary carbon and getting a non-resonating secondary carbocation. The answer at this point should be obvious. We want to put a hydrogen over here, a carbocation in this position. The kinetic product doesn't touch that second pi bond, so just redraw it as you see it, and put the halogen on the carbocation position. You're done. The thermodynamic product has a resonance stabilized intermediate if that final pi bond will be more substituted and therefore more stable. The quick and easy trick is to place a pi bond between the two carbons that used to be on opposite pi bonds. What do I mean by that? Carbon one and two share a pi bond. Carbon three and four share a pi bond. Carbons two and three each have a pi bond, but they're attached to the opposite pi bond. And putting the new double bond between them is the resonance position. Again, this is the quick shortcut, the quick way to get the answer for this on your exam. The hydrogen in both cases goes onto the leftmost carbon, carbon number one, and the thermodynamic product gets the chlorine on the remaining carbon on the far extreme. If we call the position of hydrogen number one, then the thermodynamic product has the pi bond between two and three and the chlorine on four. This is considered a one-four addition because hydrogen and chlorine are on carbons one and four. The kinetic product gets a number one for the position of hydrogen, number two for the position of the halogen, and this is a one-two addition. Thermodynamic is slow, 
it's more stable. Notice that the final pi bond is tri-substituted and has a 1,4 addition. The kinetic product tends to be fast, less substituted. It's a di-substituted pi bond and a 1,2 addition. That's the quick shortcut for your exam. Now let's break it up and justify the shortcut here by understanding what happened. The first thing we have to recognize is the placement of that carbocation. We'll show the starting molecule. We'll show each of the pi bonds reaching out for an HCl, show the associated intermediates, and then compare them side by side. When the green pi bond reaches out for the hydrogen, chlorine breaks away. We have the same skeleton where the purple pi bond hasn't been touched, and then we have two options. Put the hydrogen on the left carbon or the right carbon, recognizing that one of the former pi bound carbons gets the hydrogen, the other one gets a carbocation. Now let's do the same thing for the purple pi bond, grabbing the hydrogen, breaking away the chlorine. This time the green pi bond doesn't move, and we place the hydrogen on the right or tertiary carbon and on the left primary carbon. The carbon that doesn't get the hydrogen gets a carbocation. Let's quickly analyze what we see for every carbocation and determine which is ultimately the most stable. Starting from the left, we have a tertiary resonance capable carbocation. Notice that the green electrons can resonate towards it, that's tertiary allylic. The second one has a primary carbocation with absolutely no resonance capability. The third one has a secondary carbocation with no resonance capability. And the rightmost one has a secondary carbocation, but it's capable of resonance with the purple electrons, making it secondary allylic. We're looking for the most stable one, but let's go ahead and rank them just to make sure you understand. The less substituted the carbocation, the less stable it's going to be. And if you're not comfortable with this, go back to my carbocation stability video. The primary carbocation is the absolute worst, least stable. Secondary carbocation without resonance is the second worst. The allylic carbocations can resonate, making them more stable, but the tertiary allylic is more substituted and resonance capable compared to the secondary allylic, which is resonance capable, but not quite as substituted. That's the first step in this reaction figuring out which carbocation is going to form first, and then determining what happens in the next step. We have our intermediate, and it's easier to start with a kinetic product. When you have a kinetic product, as soon as that carbocation forms, the chlorine doesn't go far. It sticks around because it's so cold, it doesn't have a lot of energy, and it's desperate to get rid of its charge. To get rid of the charge, the negative chloride will attack the positive carbocation, and you instantly get your product. If hydrogen is on carbon one and chlorine is on carbon two, this gave us a one, two addition, our kinetic or fast product. Now let's look at the thermodynamic product. The starting carbocation is the same. It's simply a question of what happens next. At higher temperatures, the goal isn't speed of forming the product as much as stability of the final product. And if that stability is going to take a little more time, it's okay. We have the high temperatures to stabilize this intermediate, this carbocation intermediate, for as long as it takes to form that more stable final product. And what are we referring to with that more stable final product? Well, look at the pi bond. It has two carbon groups coming out of it, making it a di-substituted pi bond. This molecule is capable of an even more substituted pi bond, which would make the final product so much more stable. How do we do that? By taking the pi electrons and resonating them over towards the carbocation to give us another intermediate, an intermediate that has the pi bond sitting between a secondary and tertiary carbon with a carbocation at the secondary position. The carbocation appears to have gone down in stability. It went from tertiary to secondary, but the pi bond went up in stability. It now has three carbon groups coming out of it, making it tri-substituted. How is the carbocation okay with that secondary rather than tertiary position? It's not exactly okay with it, but the high temperatures stabilize it enough to let it happen, long enough for chlorine to come on over and attack at that secondary rather than tertiary position. 
once that chlorine is attached we don't care if it's on a secondary or tertiary carbon what we do care about is the fact that the pi bond is tri-substituted making that so much more stable making this entire molecule more stable but to reach this stability it took time and to stabilize all the intermediates during that time we needed heat making this the thermodynamic product hydrogen is at carbon number one put in chlorine at carbon number four for the 1,4 thermodynamic product. Be sure to join me in the next video where we solve question four in the Orgo 2 practice final exam. You can download the exam and solutions on my website, layerforsci.com slash orgo2final.